morning, honey. How are you this morning? Feeling good. How about some coffee? A cup of coffee would be great. Okay. How'd you sleep last night? Oh, I slept great. And you know, I was wondering, how about if we, uh... No. Something's not right. Honey! Uh, honey, what's wrong? What's uh, wrong? Hey, I don't feel hang on. good. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I'm gonna call 911. Hang on. Yeah. I'm gonna get help. Stroke is a terrible illness that has an enormous financial and emotional cost in our country. In the U.S., there are 800,000 strokes every year. That is one every 40 seconds. It is the fifth leading cause of death in adults and the number one cause of disability. The estimated economic burden to our country is over $33 billion a year. Stroke occurs due to diminished blood flow to the brain, causing injury and cell death. This is caused by either blockage of blood flow in vessels supplying the brain, termed ischemic stroke, or bleeding from ruptured blood vessels in the brain, termed hemorrhagic stroke. 80% of strokes are ischemic, 20% are hemorrhagic. Of the ischemic strokes, a fourth are termed large vessel occlusions, or LVOs, because the blocked artery is large and supplying a large portion of the brain. The symptoms of stroke are sudden onset of facial drooping, arm or leg weakness, speech difficulty, or problems with balance and coordination. The BFAST stroke screening tool is a primary stroke screen to determine if a stroke may be causing a patient's symptoms. One or more positive findings should alert the EMS provider to the likely diagnosis of stroke. Is there a sudden loss or difficulty with balance? Is there a sudden loss of vision or double vision? Is there a facial droop? Is there arm or leg weakness? Is there difficulty with speech? Ask the patient to repeat a phrase such as, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And remember, time is brain. 911, what's the address of the emergency? 123 Main Street. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. My husband, we're having a conversation and he slumped over and his speech was slurred. Okay, my partner's dispatching the paramedics to help you. I have a few questions and some instructions to help us take care of your husband. Are you with him now? Yes, I am. How old is he? He's 63. Is he completely alert? No, he's not really alert at all. Exactly what time did these symptoms start? Less than a minute ago. I've sent the paramedics to help you. Stay in the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do. Okay, please hurry. It's very likely that he has suffered from a stroke, so the ambulance crew may recommend that your husband be transferred to the closest comprehensive stroke center, which can better address his condition than a regular emergency department. Before the responders arrive, please put away any pets, gather a list of medication and insurance and ID cards, move any furniture blocking our access once we're inside the house, and unlock the door. I'll, I'll do that, but please hurry. Can you give me a description of the house so we can find it quickly once we're on your street? Yes, it's a red brick town home. There's a blue pickup truck in front of the uh, house. If he gets worse in any way, call us back immediately for further instructions. Fire and EMS. Oh, yes, please hurry, my husband. Good morning, ma'am. I'm going to have okay, to step right over here. I'm going to assess your husband. You okay, so my name's Carrie. I'm a paramedic with MCHG. Can you tell me what happened this morning? Yes, well, we're having a conversation, and he just started slurring his words, and then he kind of slumped over. Okay, uh, it's about 9 a.m. now. What time do you think that started? I guess about 10 minutes before y'all got here. All right. Did he complain of anything beforehand? Any loss of balance, uh, double vision, blurry vision? He just mentioned that he wasn't feeling very well. Okay. Uh, did you notice anything when all of this occurred? Any seizure-like activity? No, nothing like that. Okay. What kind of uh, medical history does he have? He, he does have hypertension. Okay. Other than that, he's healthy. Yes. So, from what I can tell, it sounds like he might be having a stroke. Uh, we're going to conduct a race exam. It'll help us determine the severity. At this point in the examination, there's a high likelihood of a stroke diagnosis, and the medic should proceed directly to a quantitative stroke scale to assess for LVO. Okay, sir, I'm gonna perform what's called a race exam. It'll help us determine the severity of your stroke. I'm gonna have you perform a number of tasks. The first one we're gonna test is your facial droop. So if you could, could you smile real big for me? Smile real big. Okay, perfect. Okay, so he's got some facial droop. It's not severe. We'll go ahead and give him a one for that. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you raise both of your arms, palms up. Can you raise them up for me? Okay. Can you raise this one? No, not at all. Okay, all right, we can put that down. Okay, so he's not able to do anything. We'll go ahead and give him a two on that. All right, so I'm gonna have you raise this leg. Can you raise this leg for me? All right, perfect. You can go ahead and put that down. All right, and can you raise your right leg for me? Okay, he's unable to raise his right leg at all, so we'll give him a score of two for that as well. 
Okay, uh, I'm gonna do an eye tracking exam. You see my finger right here? All right, what I want you to do is follow my finger with your eyes, okay? Keep following, very good, keep following. Very good, okay, he's able to track without deficit, so we'll give him a zero for that. Okay, I'm gonna perform one last thing. Uh, what I want you to do is close your eyes real tight and make a fist. Can you do that? Can you close your eyes and can you make a fist? He's unable to perform either. That'll also give him a two. His total race score is seven. He meets criteria for a comprehensive stroke center. What you just saw was the race score, a pre-hospital scoring system which helps predict large vessel occlusion or LVO. This scoring system guides in the triage of patients to the appropriate hospital. RACE stands for Rapid Arterial Occlusion Evaluation. As the stroke neurological deficits increase, the RACE score increases, and the likelihood of large vessel occlusion also increases. For all patients with acute ischemic stroke, approximately 20% will have an LVO. For a RACE score of 5, approximately 50% will have an LVO. And for a RACE score of 7 or 8, approximately 70% will have an LVO. Houston Methodist of Woodlands Medic 20. Methodist Woodlands, go ahead. Medic 20 en route to your facility, emergency traffic, ETA approximately 15 minutes. Coming in with a 63-year-old male, this is going to be a stroke activation, sudden onset right sudden weakness, uh, it's going to be a race score of 7. Uh, blood sugar was 123, last seen well at 8.45 this morning, uh, we should be there in about 15. Any questions? Report received. See you on arrival. For the last 22 years, there has been one approved reperfusion therapy for stroke, TPA. It has been shown to provide improved outcomes in ischemic stroke patients, but it must be administered within four and a half hours of last known well. In 2015, there were five major clinical trials published that demonstrate a significant improvement in functional outcomes in LVO patients treated with endovascular clot retrieval. This procedure is known as a thrombectomy. This procedure is beneficial in select patients up to 24 hours after last known well, including wake up or unknown onset strokes. This emerging stroke therapy has changed the way EMS systems must operate. Now instead of stroke yes, no, it's stroke yes, no, and how bad? To answer this question, MCHD utilizes the race score to determine the probability for LVO. Any score of five or greater is triaged to a comprehensive stroke center capable of performing a thrombectomy. If EMS takes these patients to a non-endovascular center and a transfer is required, this delays therapy and will result in a diminished chance of a good functional recovery. Hi guys, good morning. This is Mr. Smith, a 63 year old male, sudden onset, difficulty speech, right sided weakness, started about 8.45 this morning while he was eating breakfast. Um, history of hypertension, he was at a rate of 90 AFib. Um, he does not take any blood thinners. Uh, blood sugar was 123. Hi there, sir. My name is Stacy. I'm with Neurology. Uh, you're here at Houston Methodist. We're going to take you over to CAT scan to get a quick picture of your brain with and without contrast and a CTA head and neck with and without contrast. Hey, Dr. Effendi. Hey, what's the story? This is a 63-year-old gentleman with a known history of hypertension. EMS found him with new onset AFib, last known normal 8.45 a.m., right-sided weakness, and some aphasia. Okay, what's the NIH? About an 18. Okay. CT head without contrast is performed to rule out hemorrhage. In this patient, there's no hemorrhage. He's a great candidate for IV TPA and no contraindications were found. We should go ahead and give it. CTA of the head and neck is performed. This patient has LVO and is a great candidate for thrombectomy. It's important to note the workflow of the medics. First, possible LVO was identified on scene using the race score. A patient with a race score of five or greater should be taken directly to a comprehensive stroke center if travel time is not increased by more than 15 minutes. Second, a pre-notification should be given to the hospital once en route. This should include age, last known well, race scale, blood glucose level, estimated time of arrival, and any other pertinent medical information. Third, a quick and thorough sign-off should be given to the emergency department doctor and nurse upon arrival to the ED. Mr. Smith is a 63-year-old male with acute onset of aphasia and right-sided weakness. He has LVO. We're going to perform a thrombectomy using stent retriever and aspiration. The initial angiogram demonstrates an occlusion of the left middle cerebral artery. A wire and catheter are taken through the area of occlusion. A retrievable stent is placed into the clot to grab the clot. Then a larger catheter is positioned next to the clot 
and placed on suction to help hold the clot. Finally, the stent and catheter are removed with the clot attached. The follow-up angiogram demonstrates opening of the previously occluded blood vessel, also known as revascularization. Mr. Smith, the procedure's over. Can you give me a big smile? Great. Can you lift up your arms? Good. Can you lift up this leg? And how about the other one? Can you close your eyes? And can you make a fist? Great. You're doing much better. For EMS providers, the way we approach and assess stroke patients has changed dramatically. These new developments make it imperative for EMS agencies to develop guidelines and training on identifying LVO in the field and transporting them to comprehensive stroke centers. Stroke therapy has changed. For large vessel occlusion less than 24 hours or an unknown last known well, thrombectomy is the standard of care. The current therapy window for strokes are up to 24 hours from last known well for thrombectomy and up to 4.5 hours from last known well for TPA. Thus, all patients with acute neurological complaints and a last known well within 24 hours should be stroke alerted. Patients with a positive screen for LVO should be taken directly to a comprehensive stroke center. Develop a golden hour for stroke mentality in EMS. Time to therapy is directly related to patient outcomes and should be minimized by EMS with a load and go strategy similar to trauma. And finally, develop an expert team and communicate on a regular basis regarding your system's performance and coordination between the hospital's emergency department, stroke team, and neurointerventionalist. The latest data from the American Heart Association meta-analysis of optimal EMS stroke severity screens for LVO demonstrate moderate to good performance for three scores, RACE, LAMS, and CSTAT. The optimal scoring systems may vary depending on system training resources and preferences. The RACE score is derived from parts of the NIHSS specific to identify patients at risk for large vessel occlusion. The score has five components tested on each patient and is a quantitative stroke scale. As the score gets higher, so does the risk for LVO. We will first assess for any facial weakness. No asymmetry scores zero. Mild or partial weakness scores one. Severe weakness or no movement scores two. Next, we will assess for arm weakness. Patient able to lift both arms, palms up, for greater than 10 seconds, scores zero. Able to lift but can't maintain for 10 seconds, scores one. Unable to lift against gravity, scores two. Next, we will assess for leg weakness. Patient able to lift both legs for greater than five seconds, scores zero. Able to lift but can't maintain for five seconds, scores one. Unable to lift against gravity, scores two. Next, we will assess for head or gaze deviation. No noted gaze or head deviation scores zero. Any noted head or gaze deviation, or if the patient will not follow the examiner's finger, either with head or eyes, scores one. Next, we will assess for aphasia. This is only tested if right side weakness is present, indicating a left side hemispheric stroke. Able to follow both commands, scores zero. Able to only follow one command, scores one. Unable to follow either command, scores two. Next, we will assess for agnosia or neglect. This is only tested if there is a left side weakness indicating a right side hemispheric stroke. While standing on the patient's left side, hold up the patient's arm. Answering both agnosia questions appropriately, scores zero. Able to answer only one question, scores one. Unable to answer either question, scores two. The total possible score is nine. The aphasia tests are only done for a right side deficit and the agnosia tests are only done for a left side deficit. A score of five or greater is suggestive of LVO and should immediately be transported to a comprehensive stroke center. The LAMS or LA motor score is a three component, five point quantitative stroke scale that evaluates only motor components. We will now demonstrate the LAMS score. Sir, can you smile for me? The face exam is scored as a zero, both sides move symmetrically, or one, one side is weak or flaccid. The next component is to assess for arm strength. Have the patient hold up both arms, palms up. Sir, can you hold your arms, palms up? A score of zero holds both up without difficulty, one, weakness but able to hold them up, or two, flaccid and unable to hold them up. The next component is grip strength. 
Sir, can you squeeze my fingers? A score of zero. Both sides grip normally. One, one side is weak compared to the other. Or two, one side is flaccid. A score of four or greater is suggestive of LVO and should be transported to a comprehensive stroke center. EMS identifying probable LVO stroke in the field and pre-alerting is a vital component in the outcomes of our stroke patients. We hope this video has been useful in providing training on stroke, large vessel occlusion, and several of the most common stroke severity scores. MCHD would like to thank Houston Methodist The Woodlands Hospital and The Woodlands Fire Department for their support and collaboration in producing this training video. You can find a link to this video and other training resources on these websites. You can also find additional stroke and EMS education by subscribing to our MCHD podcast. For Houston Methodist The Woodlands Hospital, I am Dr. Sabi Fendi. And for the Montgomery County Hospital District, I'm Dr. Rob Dixon. Thank you for watching.